Hey GED students, I got this problem on Facebook from a student, Megan. She said she'd been working on uh, solving equations and she was really feeling confident and then she got to one with a fraction and it just threw her off. Okay, so I have good news and that is there's a lot of ways to deal with this fraction so that it doesn't have to throw you off as they say. Um, that being said, you don't actually know have to know how to uh, deal with fractions when you're doing algebra on your GED. You can just pick up your GED calculator and handle it with them. So with that, I should say. So probably the first way is just to deal with the fractions in your calculator. That's one way to make sure those pesky little fractions don't freak you out. If you've got to add a fraction, add it in your calculator. If you've got to multiply it, multiply it in your calculator, so on and so forth. So I am going to look at doing this with your calculator. And um, even if that's all you remember from this whole video, you'd still be able to do it. But it turns out that's not even the best way necessarily to do with this, to deal with this. Another thing you could do is you can convert. There's only one fraction in this problem, one half. And most students know the decimal form of one half. They're like, oh, uh, a one half is 0.5. So we could, instead of dealing with the fraction at all, we could convert to a decimal. And then there's even a third way, and this is the mathematician's favorite way, and this is a super nifty trick to learn. I'm going to teach it at the end because you don't need to know it to pass your GED, but it is so nice. And that is... Uh, with an equation, and this is an equation, see the equal sign? We can actually get rid of fractions. We have the power to do whatever we want. And we can use that power to do whatever we want. When we have an equation, we have that power. But we can use that power to do whatever we want in order to get rid of fractions. That's the thing you've wanted to be able to do ever since you first met the fraction back in third grade, right? You wished you could banish it from the planet. Well, it turns out when we have an equal sign like this, we can. Okay, so I'm going to do, do it three different ways. And feel free to stop at whichever way you like best because you don't have to know all three ways. You just have to know one way to not get intimidated by fractions. First, I'll do it in my TI. Okay. So what I notice here is that this fraction, this one half, is shoved up against this parentheses. So what is it doing? It's multiplying. Now, it's actually super duper easy to multiply fractions with whole numbers. Because if I have one half three times, well, what do I have? I have three halves. I just multiply into the top of the fraction and leave the bottom the same. But that being said, even if you didn't know that, you could totally do that in your TI calculator. You can type in one half by using the N over D button, putting in a one there and a two there. Now it's super important when you want to navigate around that fraction in and out and around it, you use your little arrow button. So I'll, I'll arrow down to put in the two on the bottom and then I arrow out right um, before I then press times and I can times it by three and I'll see that that is indeed three halves. Okay, uh, but same thing if I'm passing out the one half to negative five, you know, one half, if I have one half negative five times, I'm going to have negative five halves. Okay, and again, you could do that in your calculator. Uh, you would type N over D, just like before, a one in the bottom, arrow down to, or a one in the top, I should say, arrow down to the bottom to put in a two. Make sure you arrow right to get out of the fraction, and then times it by five. And of course, we press enter uh, to get the answer, and it would tell you that it's negative five halves. Okay, now there's nothing to do here on the right-hand side, and so what we're going to see is it just stays the same. Okay, and now we are getting there. My P is not alone yet. And so what I'm going to start to do now that I've simplified, I did the multiplication I saw, is to solve, work to get the letter alone. So remember when we're solving, we work the order of operations backwards. So move anything that's adding or subtracting first. That five halves is subtracting with P, so I'll add it to both sides. Okay. So on this side, subtracting five halves and adding five halves are opposites. They'll cancel. I've got three halves P left on this side. 
And what is that going to be equal to? Well, you might be going, I don't know how to do two plus five halves, Kate. I hate adding fractions. The day uh, our teacher taught that in class, I puked, cried, and passed out. So no stress. I can put that into my TI calculator. So two plus, that part's easy. Now I want to get a fraction. So I type the N over D button. Five on the top. Arrow down to the bottom. Two on the bottom. Press Enter. And I find out that that is the same as nine halves. Great, almost done, almost done. But I want to get rid of this three halves P. Now this is, sh oh, let me say that again, guys. I was not clear. I want to get rid of the three halves that's hanging out with P so that P can be alone. I want to get rid of the three halves. Now, take a look at that three halves. It's shoved up against P, which means technically it's multiplying. So even if you knew nothing else about fractions, nothing else, no tricks, no algebra, you could divide by three halves. Now you might say, Kate, that's super disgusting. I don't know how to take a fraction and divide by another fraction. That was another lesson that I uh, went to the nurse's office for, so I didn't have to participate in. And that's cool. Again, your calculator does know how. Okay. So if you're going to do this in your TI, use the N over D button to get nine halves. Press divided by, and then use the N over D button again to get three halves. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Uh, nine halves divided by, and I'm just arrowing around to move around so it looks correct. And it turns out it's not as ugly as it looked. It's just three. So the correct answer here is three. Now, this was just me straight up using... Uh, the rules of algebra, knowing zero about fractions and using my calculator to handle those fractions. And that's totally fine. You can do it that way. But like I said, this isn't the only way to do it. So let's look, how would this go if we converted to a decimal instead? We can always, 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 always in math trade out equivalent numbers. Trade one thing that's equal for another thing. Let me show you what I mean. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trade. I don't like that number one half. It's freaking me out. I'll just change it, trade it for its decimal equivalent. And most students at least know that one half is the same as 0.5, right? 0.5 is halfway through my decimal number system. And so you can just literally change out this one half for 0.5. Students say to me all the time, can I do that? Yeah, you can totally do that. That's we can substitute in algebra anytime we want. We can trade out one equivalent thing for another, okay? And so now it doesn't seem so scary to students. Now they're really chill. They're like, oh, I know how to multiply with decimals in my calculator. 0.5 uh, times 3 gives me 1.5, 1.5p. And 0.5 times negative 5 gives me negative 2.5. And that whole jazz is equal to two. And all of a sudden, this seems so much less scary with those lovely, friendly decimals. Now time to start solving. Again, I'll move anybody adding or subtracting with P first. And what will my new equation be? Well, subtracting 2.5 and adding 2.5 are opposites. They'll cancel. The only thing left on my left-hand side is 1.5P. And on my right, I have 4.5. 2 plus 2.5 is 4.5, I'm almost done, but that 1.5 is shoved up against P, it's multiplying, I will get rid of it by dividing. Now once again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. I'm going to hop over to there to the other side, divide by 1.5 so I don't lose my balance. Multiplying and dividing by 1.5 are opposites. They will cancel P's alone just like we wanted and type it into your calculator. 4.5 divided by 1.5 is, look at that, 3. We got the same answer. Like doing things different ways could actually work out for me. Okay, cool. So you could just do the fraction straight up in your calculator. You could turn that nasty fraction into a decimal to deal with it. Or, boom, 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 here comes my favorite way, y'all. Now you're going to be cool like a mathematician. You can literally get rid of fractions. Let me show you. 
Okay, so that one half, you see that there? It's multiplying with all of 3p minus 5. Well, I just want to get rid of one half, and I know what the opposite of a fraction is. The opposite of a fraction is what we call its reciprocal. It's flip. Basically, when you think about one, point, one half, yeah, it's shoved up against the parentheses, so it's multiplying, but it's only the top of a fraction that's multiplying. Remember that a fraction bar means divide. The bottom, the two, is actually a divider. So if I want to get rid of this fraction, I could do the opposite by flipping the fraction on its head. I can make two the multiplier by putting it up top, and one the divider by putting it on the bottom. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, the flip of the fraction, and it is about to make that fraction go away. You know, uh, a two on the top, a factor of two on the top will cancel with a two on the bottom. And of course, ones don't do anything when you multiply and divide. So that's totally gone. That fraction is out of our lives. And we have just 3p minus 5 on the left-hand side. Now, what's going to happen on the right-hand side? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. And we just got rid of our little fraction problem. Okay, we multiplied by the reciprocal. We can do whatever we want in uh, to an equation as long as we do it to both sides. We just use that power to get rid of fractions. So nice. And now super easy to solve this sucker. These don't usually intimidate students at all. I'll move over the subtract 5 by adding 5. New equation then will be 3p is equal to 9. Almost done. Got to get rid of that 3 to solve. It's multiplying, so I'll divide it away on both sides. And multiplying and dividing by 3. Cancel p's alone just like I wanted. And look at that. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And you have so much freedom when you're solving equations. It's great. As long as you do true things, you can literally do a lot and still get the same answer. We see this. Uh, what a great example of, you know, three different problem solving methods all getting us to the exact same place. So you might be saying, well, which one should I use? And well, you should use whichever one you like, whichever one seems easier to you in the moment. You know, the more tools in your toolbox, the more skills you have, uh, the better that prepared you're going to be for the GED and for that college algebra, uh, those college algebra classes that are required for most degrees. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.